Let's turn on the signal flares here. These will be used for as non-radio communication devices during missions where radio silence may be needed or in communications with the airport in case you lost your radio and are approaching for landing. You only have one flare of each color, red, green, white, and yellow, so use them only when necessary. Set the RA-28, which is our VHF-1, to the desired channel. Ours is there already. And let's perform the ARC-22 ADF test. This test is conducted in two different steps. One that checks the ADF compass needle, while the other checks the ADF oral tone. Before we initiate the test, let's make sure the ADF is in compass mode, then press the red test button. On the HS side, the yellow ADF needle should swing to a relative bearing of 060 degrees. Yep, it looks good, so let go of the test button. Back to the right panel, and switch the ADF mode to antenna, and perform the test again. This time we should hear an oral tone. While performing this test, you may hear other tones. That's an indication that the ADF receiver is tuned to an NDB station that is in range and being received. And those tones are the Morse code identifier for that station, and are being mixed with the test tone. Set the ARC-22 ADF receiver to the proper station, back into compass mode, so we move on to the autopilot. Enable the heading hold, bank hold, and pitch hold flight modes, as this is how the K-50 is flown in normal conditions. Autopilot on, the pilot inputs on top of that. Next, enable the autopilot altitude hold mode. And next, we set if the altitude hold mode will try and hold a radar or barometric altitude. If you will be flying under 300 meters, set this to radar altitude, as the helicopter will then attempt to maintain your relative altitude to the terrain. At higher altitudes, barometric will be more appropriate, as it will depend only on the barometric altimeter, which won't be affected by terrain altitude. We'll expand on that during our navigation lesson. Finally, select the desired mode for the autopilot heading or course hold. DH means desired heading, while DT means desired track angle. Once again, we'll cover that in depth in the navigation lesson. We're almost done with the right panel. All that remains is setting up our data link and our PVI-800 navigation control panel. Starting with the PVTZ-800 offboard targeting data link mode panel, let's set our aircraft ID. KA-50s are designed to share targets between a flight of four helicopters, so each helicopter can have an identifier of one through four. Set the appropriate number based on your mission and position in the flight. We'll leave ours as one. It's important to ensure each helicopter in a flight has a different number set here. Next to it, we set the data mode. There are different modes in which data can be passed to and received from other helicopters during a mission, so let's leave that discussion for the combat lessons. Suffice it to say for now that this is when we'd be setting this mode. Time for our BVI-800. Here, we first set its mode to operational, then turn on the data link power. Last, but not least, we set up the BVI-800 navigation mode to our desired set. As you may have guessed, we'll cover this in depth in the navigation lesson, but for now, we'll set it to waypoint mode and select waypoint one. Excellent. Done with the right panel, follow the flow moving up the right forward panel where we uncage and set the standby ADI and end on the overhead panel. Here is when we set our UV-26 countermeasure system for the mission. We'll leave it as is for now. Then, moving from right to left, we check the warning lights, set the pitot ram and pitot static heat on, and reset the laser warning system. Well, believe it or not, we're done. This took a lot longer than it will once you're proficient in the checklist and flows, but it was a great learning experience and it allowed us to understand what it is we're turning on. It was Confucius who once said, tell me and I will forget. Show me and I may remember. Involve me and I'll understand. Oh, I certainly hope you understood. Now let's take a break and come back to do this once again. But this time, at a much more rapid pace and without most of the explanation.